This is Disclosure Now with Art Quinoa and Brian Zeng, a show where we expose the truths that are nefariously hidden from humanity. Today we welcomed Tyler Kiwala of Journey to Truth and talked about his experiences that have made him question reality and begin to perceive a hidden world that exists all around us. Welcome to Disclosure Now with Arkeem Ra and Brian Singh. Um, this is a special show today. This is the first show I'm doing with my uh, with with Brian, and uh, we're going to be co-hosting together uh, forward. And uh, we've got Tyler Kowal from Journey to Truth with us. Um, he really doesn't need any introduction. Like I'm sure if you're watching my show, you probably know who he is. But basically, uh, his channel Journey to Truth is uh, getting the truth out there, getting the disclosure movement out there. Uh, they have their conference every year, Journey to Truth conference. Uh, that's currently it's held in uh, Grafton, uh, Illinois, every year. Not sure we'll talk about that a little bit. And uh, yeah, just thank you for coming on our show, Tyler. We we it's really an honor to have you aboard. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. I've been kind of waiting to be invited on a show to talk about some of this stuff. Uh, the right platform. I've been on other shows and no one knows the right questions to ask because they're not involved in the programs or they're not whatever. You, I don't even know what I'm actually involved in, but you guys understand it. So I'm excited because you're going to be asking the good questions and I have some stuff that I just like to share and get off my chest, but I'm glad to be here. Yeah, well, we're really glad to give you that opportunity. I mean, it's it's definitely an honor to give you the chance to to speak about some of the experiences you've you've had. That you know, you're so busy interviewing other people that you you know it. People are probably excited to. People probably want to know. So, um, is there anything you want to say, Brian? Yeah, um, you know, about the secret space programs in particular. You know, Tyler, it was it was you on uh, Journey to Truth with Aaron interviewing Tony Rodriguez in particular. And, and I believe Penny Bradley somewhere in there, but mm -hmm. those two interviews in particular, and then me going to contact in the desert this year, um, down in Southern California and, and meeting people who have testimonies in real life and getting to see that. And this particular phrase 20 and back, that's what really struck me. It's one thing for people to talk about spaceships and reptilians, but that, that 20 and back theme is something that's not like you anyone's going to randomly make up much less three, two, three, four, five people. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's something that I can't say that I actually have experienced, but I do know that the earliest documentation that we know of, of the term 20 and back, and it actually wasn't the term 20 and back, but Michael Relf in his book, uh, mission to Mars or the Mars reports in 2000. Um, it was a book that came out in 2000 it was the first mention of a 20-year abduction and age regression and the you know, whole time travel aspect of these programs so that was it to my knowledge the first time that was ever brought to the public public's attention and i don't even think that book is available in hardback i think it's only like a pdf copy but then we have william Tompkins, mm -hmm. who claims that the u.s navy started their 20 and back program in 1980 and he he said millions of people a year were being abducted into the program so i don't know the act the number of i don't know the accuracy of his testimony it seems credible to me and i don't know the accuracy of that number but regardless it's becoming apparent that something's going on and then we also have to ask ourselves like why do people want to share their memories why do people want to talk about this stuff you know sometimes i see people they'll have a session with some channeler and stuff comes through and then they'll start talking as if the, you know, um, this actually happened to it. But then when you ask them the question, do you remember any of this? They'll say, no, it just came through the session. So I think in one aspect, you have to be careful because it can be irresponsible to share right. something that came through someone else. And I'm very careful when I share anything that we're going to talk about today, it's literally from my memory and experiences I've had. If I got into the stuff that came through the sessions, it's incredible information that still I have a hard time believing. And I don't want to share that because if I don't feel that it's true or if I don't remember anything, uh, then I, I just can't in my own integrity share that information publicly. Because what happens if um, I saw a bad reader or I had a bad session and that wasn't good information? Now I'm muddy in the waters with this information. So mm -hmm. I don't want to do that. And I think it's important to understand that when... We have to ask ourselves, you know, why people want to come forward. Is it for ego purposes? Some people like to feel important and they want to tell their story. And 
you know, I understand it. That's the programming we were born into. But then my reason for being here today is because I see a lot of this subject getting ridiculed. And I, the only reason I was ever drawn to it, because it resonated so deeply. And it wasn't until years down the road that I realized, oh, I think I'm involved in some level. And then things started happening in my life that made me, I, I quit guessing. I knew that this stuff was real. I didn't have to be, someone didn't have to prove it to me because what was happening in my life was proving it to me. And I can speak about this confidently. I can interview people confidently because when I hear, when I listen to them, I know it's real because I'm going through the same stuff. And I feel like it's important for someone, I, I like people, I, you know, watch our show and a lot of people look up to us in a way. And I feel like it's almost a responsibility in a way to um, just share this information and let people know that it happens to real people like me and you. And I think it's time to just start talking about it. Yeah. 100%. It's definitely, um, the only way that we can do anything about some of the like nefarious activities going on, um, is to know about it. And a lot of the stuff, um, I think like the idea that we can't do anything about it is definitely, definitely not true because if, if we couldn't do anything about it, then they would just do it all out in the open. They wouldn't hide it. Right. So I think like, like it's a big part of it. And what, what our job is, uh, as far as like whistleblowers or whatever you want to call us, uh, is blowing, blowing it wide open to the fact that like there, there's a testimony that connects, there's collaborative testimony, there's evidence. It's not just some sort of like far off thing. Like you can actually put the dots together. And when you listen to different people, that's, that's, that's how you get the clear picture. I think, because like, I feel like that's what I really like about your show is like, you give everybody the opportunity to speak and you always tell everybody else, like make up your own mind on this information. Like everybody has like their pieces to the puzzle. And I think, you know, we, we all have things we believe in or, or stuff like that. We, they have stuff that gets in the way, like programming, things like that. But the more you start looking at like the fact that it's all these different people, it's happening across the world. You know what I mean? Like, uh, that's where it starts to become a clearer picture. Like people are saying the same things and, and having the same testimony and that grounds it in reality and makes it that much more real. And I'm sure like when you started interviewing people and w seeing it in your life and your own experiences, that's really what wakes you up to it. It's the reality of it. It's like the idea that there's no evidence. Well, there really is. And when you look, you do, you do find it. it Mount mountains of evidence, actually. I mean, you know, Tyler, you're speaking to people, you know, coming out for whatever reasons it could be a testimony it could be they want attention and what we're finding is behind the scenes if you will um it's people who are they're recognizing that they saw each other or two you get two people and they both remember seeing a third person that was actually really scary for me when i first woke up to this because <clears throat> i found some of the like, facebook groups and stuff like that and there are people who remembered me and a lot of people that remembered me were like scared of me and that was that's still hard for me to deal with but um I just want to get into this. Like you said that you, you you don't really have experiences with 20 and backs, but you do have experience in your life mm -hmm. where you you know that you're a part of these programs. You want to maybe like elaborate on that and explain that? Yeah. So, I mean, for all I know, it could be a part of a 20 and back. I have no idea. I just can't come out and say that I am. But <clears throat> so whenever I first learned about the uh, secret space program information on cosmic disclosure, back when that came out, it struck me so deep to my core, like and everything I heard after that was like, it wasn't like I was learning about it. It was like I was remembering it and things would be said. I'm like, oh, oh yeah, I remember that. Like it just, I just knew like it was so deep in my DNA. I was so connected to that information. I didn't even have to second guess it. Like I was like, yeah, I, for some, on a soul level, I knew it was real, these programs. I didn't know the details that took time to unpack. But so in 2017, a lot of people may have heard me talk about, um, this guy I used to work with who was escorted uh, off the job by black government vehicles. And there's a whole story, a whole wild thing that happened. Eddie but, Bradley did a really good interview with you where you talked about that. It's on yeah. our YouTube channel. Yeah. So it's a long story. We'll, we could be here all day just telling that story. But um, long story short, uh, this guy, I believe he, I don't know how or why he was actually taken from work and what he was involved in, but I think he was a victim of voice of God technology. Um, he suddenly, he suddenly knew a bunch of stuff and he suddenly 
understood things that he, I'd known him for years, my whole life. And he just, we never talked about it. And all of a sudden he had this information about weather manipulation, um, timelines, you know, the programs, ETs, all this stuff that it just didn't make any sense. And he, and he was telling me about jump rooms and time travel programs and that we have bases on Mars and all this stuff. And, and I said, how do you know this? How do you know all this stuff? And he was like, well, he's like, I don't know. They're just telling me in, in, in my head. They're just telling me. I'm like, who? He's like, I don't know. He, like, he didn't know either, but somebody was talking to him. And he basically told me he was recruited to go to Mars. He told me that he was told that the world was going to end in Labor Day of 2017. And him and like a select few people were like chosen to go to Mars. And he was somehow convinced and involved in these programs and whoever he was working with, I don't know. But uh, and then he extended that invite to me. He told me that he had permission. He was told to a ask me. And it became his mission that summer to recruit me essentially to go to Mars. And it was it's an entire long story. But uh, at the end of the summer, on uh, the very last day that I uh, that I saw him, uh, I came home from work and he was like, he broke into my house. He was in my house and it was like one last ditch, ditch effort to get me to come with him. And he, I asked him why, why, where was his truck? He parked way at like Best Buy and he walked to my house because he was like running from somebody and he was all paranoid. And I took him I took him to his truck. He's like, well, I'm here because this is your last opportunity if you want to go, blah, blah. I'm like, Larry, I'm, I'm not going to Mars, dude. Like, sorry. You know, I didn't even believe that 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 he was going there. I thought I didn't know what was going on. I thought he might have been crazy. But um, I took him to his truck. And the last thing he said to me was, see you on the other side. And after that, uh, I've never seen him again. He's been a missing person since that day, as far as I know. And hey Tyler, T Tyler, just just to let you know, sorry, we we in our, our rural internet connection here situation, we we lost about like a good eight seconds of what you said. With the, at, at the point that that gentleman is coming to have you drop him back off at his car at Best, his truck at Best Buy, and he's saying, "Here's the last time I've got for you to come." What did he say from there? Okay, so yeah, sorry. Um, he. Well, I took him to his truck and I dropped him off and he got in and rolled his window down and he said, uh, I'll see you on the other side. Hmm. And he drove off and it was real weird the way he looked at me. And since from that day on, he's been a missing person. Um, I even had people at work at the time, like, look him up. We, we tried to figure out if he was homeless, if he went to prison, if he died, you know, he's not even a missing person. He's just like his records are erased. And okay. um, so I wrote that off. I really somehow just cognitive. I don't know what happened. I just wrote it off until I started learning about the programs. And it wasn't until I heard Laura Eisenhower's testimony about the Mars recruitment. I was like, wait, that actually happens. And then I had to revisit that time in my life and run it through my head again and, and consider that everything he was telling me was real. And that's when I started realizing, oh, OK, like it got my attention. And I'm like, why? OK, now why me? You know, why was he, why me? And all this, all these questions came into my head. So that was my first introduction to being like experiencing something. And then as you tell this story and talk to people, like that doesn't happen to many people. And like, he was trying to get me to meet up with this girl who was part of a time travel program. And he was telling me about, you know, how they would get to Mars. It could be a ship and most likely a jump room. And, and like, it was just a whole number of things that now, I think about him like, man, he was like totally on point with everything. And he was talking to me about timelines and, you know, there's two different timelines and he would explain to me how we could know like which timeline would prevail and all this stuff. So, so Tyler, then I, I have to ask this given, especially your work in the community today, which I see and you know, we see and know is extremely significant to what we referred loosely as the, the full disclosure now movement, disclosure now, however you want to, to say it. And um, do you think maybe they were trying to recruit you because you have special abilities or because they use time travel technology to realize you'd be doing what you're doing now unless they got you sucked into their programs? I think both. I think maybe both. Um, I'm not saying I have special abilities, but I do think on another another version of myself has abilities um, that they might be sought after. And I also think that maybe that's like the only conclusion I can come to is somehow like they looked down your timeline or they know what, maybe they knew I was going to be a force in the disclosure, disclosure movement. And 
they thought, hey, why not? Like this guy's young. He's not awake yet. He's still a partier. Like he might, he's naive. He might believe us. He might go to Mars, you know, or he might whatever, wherever Larry was going. They thought they might have been able to hook me in. And I don't know. I always ask myself, what would have happened to me if I said yes? And I, I packed my bag and said, got in that truck with him. Like I, that was a legitimate option for me. Like, where would I have gone? Like, I don't know. Um, so I, I, I think there might be that might be part of the reason. Yeah. We were just discussing this, but but my understanding, right, Arkeem, is that Mars is one of the places they send you for combat training. Yeah. Yeah. And well, he was told that um, there's going to be women there and like they, they sold him with like the concept of women. He's like, you're, you're going to have as many women as you want. That's what and that's what he was trying to tell me. And, and that, that's kind of horrifying, given the testimonies of so many of the women who have been in these programs. It, that's it's like that the fact that they would try to bait him or lure him with a promise. Yeah, because there is, are there are the brothels um, <clears throat> that you know, like the brothel on the moon that Daryl James has talked about, and um, they have that on Mars as well. But yeah, that's just that the story with your with with uh, your friend that that is an absolutely incredible uh, story, and it definitely like. I can it's a testimony. Yeah, it's testimony. And it, it's uh it's just it's just it's just an absolutely incredible coincidence to me that this would happen to this guy, he'd end up being uh a missing person, and then you'd end up in the position that you're in. Like I find it hard to believe that that is a coincidence, you know what I mean? Like there is something there to that, I think. Um yeah, but uh, so. and, and then the other thing is it's interesting that it doesn't sound like at least to your conscious memory that they approached you directly. The, the fact that they'd have Larry, you know, spending the summer, you know, assignment before he gets taken to Mars to recruit you as well. But yeah. they're trying to keep a little bit a step away via Larry. That That's interesting. Yeah. And it was interesting. And then he started begin, becoming suspicious of me because everyone in his life, they like his wife had a restraining order against him. They took his kids away from him. Like he like every one who got close to him, something would happen to him. And and then he started asking, like he started wondering why they were allowing him to talk to me and no one else. And then he was asking me who I worked for. And he's like, who do you work for? I'm like, what are you talking about? We had this argument one day. I'm like, Larry, like, who, I have no idea. I don't work for anybody. You're lucky I'm even entertaining you right now. Like, right. but he really legitimately thought that I that he he started to become suspicious of me because he's like they don't let allow me to get close to anyone, and they're freely let me talk to. But what was interesting was when he would be at my house, black cars, black government vehicles, like with the blacked out plates, would drive through my neighborhood, and my dog at the time I only had one dog. Uh, she never ever barked at people, much less cars, especially. She would howl at these cars going by. Now, dogs can sense energy. So I don't even know if there were humans in those cars. Like, I don't know why or what was in those vehicles, but my dog, for my dog to go crazy, even they were just driving by slow. No, let me ask would, this. Yeah. What, pardon me, Tyler. Yeah. While they were driving by and your dog's howling and you're noticing these black vehicles, did you notice or feel any effects? Because a lot of people are getting these EMF type tri field meters to measure radiation frequencies to get see if you got hit by anything or did you feel i mean it's not like you whipped out a meter at the time but did you yourself feel anything um no besides uh larry you gotta go like i don't know what's going on and why these people are driving through my neighborhood and, and now they you know i don't know what you're involved in but you, you gotta leave you know and i told him that he had like basically hey you gotta go but, but at least points to larry it, it, it takes it away from larry's just some paranoid guy maybe on some kind of illicit street substance versus like now there's like black vehicles going by and they're noticeable oh, and so the fact cool. he disappeared that's a pretty big one well too. later right. on but yeah yeah <laughs> wow yeah larry yeah and and the, another interesting point to that story was this time traveler. Like he kept wanting me to meet him under this bridge, under the St. Francis bridge. It's like an hour South of me on the St. Francis river. Well, um, through whistleblowers, we've learned that the St. Francis mountains in St. Louis is a deep underground military base. It's a massive military base actually. And that's not far from me. And he kept wanting me to go down to the St. Francis bridge and under the, he's like this girl, like she's here in disguise as a homeless person. 
but she's part of this time travel program. But wow. and she stays under and she stays oh, under. I remember a guy grid. like that. Yeah. I remember a guy like that in the movie. It's depicted in the movie. Uh, John Wick does um, too. Uh, under the Silver Lake, which and you talked about it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. A little about that privately. Like I remembered that guy. He's real, the homeless guy, the mm -hmm. homeless king or whatever. And then he's got like he he can access doorways and jump gates and like that. And he's always watching people and like giving them information and stuff like that. Like yeah, I I that stuff's one hundred percent totally real. Well, there's another movie. I didn't um, forgive me. I don't remember the name of it, but uh, I wish I knew. It's about homeless people being time travelers and the guy and the homeless guy gets basically um uh exposed as being a time traveler and he ends up like just completely opening up to this guy and telling him everything and he's like yeah 30 percent of all homeless people are time travelers on mission and wow. they're yeah dude i have testimony that connects to that so we are have been talking about how montauk got moved to new orleans okay that's where montauk is like the time travel project that Project Phoenix, it's not called Montauk, but that's like what everyone knows it as. Right. But um, and what's interesting about that is like I've been like like a like a kind of like hitchhiking homeless traveler person. That was like a small stint in my life, like you know what I mean? And I kind of like got into that community and know a lot of those people, and a lot of them end up in New Orleans and like they'll get addicted to something or they'll just drink themselves to death or whatever. And I just like, and like, once people start talking about like, Mo like Montauk was moved there, I was like, that makes so much sense right. because like, yeah. And like homeless people, like, like my dad's schizophrenic. Okay. Mm -hmm. And like, if it weren't for my family and like how we cared for him and stuff like that, like he probably would have ended up on the streets. And what I know now is that he's actually like a shaman and he's like extremely gifted. Like mm -hmm. I remember he'd even like freak out my friends when I was a kid, like by telling them about like people in their family that had passed on he'd like have specific details about how they passed and like stuff they wanted to tell them that was extremely specific and like yeah so i just think that there's like definitely some truth to that like a lot of these people that seem like like it was depicted also in they clone tyrone i keep on bringing up movies but we all know it's like disclosure in our face like there's the homeless guy at the beginning of the movie and he keeps on telling he's like it's in the water young blood and he's like telling all this stuff and like yeah, i totally think there's like a truth to the fact that like hidden in plain sight like everybody walks past homeless people and like, oh no, I don't want to give you a dollar or whatever. And right. people don't like to look at them in the eye. People purposely look past them. So what yeah. perfect to target and put into these kind of programs and make them have alters and stuff like that are doing that where they might not even realize it. Cause and what's the excuse? Oh, they were drunk, they were on substances. That's why they don't rem that's why they don't remember that portion of the day. And they'll right. probably just go on with their with their lives. And that's that's huge testimony. And that's we're freezing. Oh. We're, can, we're freezing. You're good. I can still hear you guys. You're good. Okay, perfect, good. perfect. Um, but yeah, wow, that's yeah. incredible, man. That's incredible that that connects that way. Yeah, exactly. And if I think of the name of that movie, you have to watch it because the whole movie is surrounded by that. And it gets into some really intricate details. And I'm like, this is true. They're telling you the truth. But um, so then I refused to go meet this lady under the bridge. Like I just, and it was always like in the middle of the night when he wanted to go. It's scary like, when people to ask you to like, go on these like like it's scary like you don't right. party wants to say yes but party was like okay what happens if i do right like, I, you want to see like you want like part of me was like okay let's let's go talk to this time traveler but something something that was overpowering that within me telling me not to go yeah and so then he said okay well if you don't meet with her would you be interested in talking to another girl um i can have her reach out to you it'll be via facebook and i'm like sure why not have her reach out to me and he's like, okay, if she reaches, I'm like, how will I know? And he's like, you'll know. He's like, trust me, she'll make herself known. You'll know. And he's like, but she won't talk to you about anything unless you invite her to the Church of Scientology. You have to invite her to church. And that's like the code word to get her talking about the program. So you and have to invite her. I had to say it. So she knew right. that like I was whatever. And he, uh, so she, uh, next day at work, um, I'm working. I check my phone. I get blown up on facebook this beautiful girl uh likes like every single one of my photos like all of them like every like completely getting my attention and then she sends me a private message she goes hey i um i heard you're friends with larry and i'm like okay i'm like hey i said hey are you the time traveler and she's like oh ha, what are you talking about like she kept like dancing around it and i just something told me i'm like i, I was gonna like ask her about scientology but then I didn't. So I kept asking her other questions and she kind of danced around it and then it kind of went nowhere. And I was just like, I, I just, this is way off. It doesn't feel right. And 
I told Larry, he's like, well, did you talk to her? I'm like, I'm like, yeah, but uh, she didn't tell me anything. He's like, well, did you invite her to church? I'm like, no. And he got real mad. He was, he's like, dude, I told you, like, she's not going to tell you anything unless you like, and I'm like, dude, I'm sorry. I just don't feel right about this. I don't know what I'm getting myself into, whatever. So, but that was another interesting aspect to all of it. You know, now when you looked at her profile, did you, did anything seem off about it other than, wow, she's like a supermodel and what do you know? And everything seems perfect, but there's not a lot of detail about who this person is. It's it just was, more of a profile. It was a fresh account. It was almost like a brand new account. Um, it, she was located in Texas. She had like nine pictures and that was it. You know, it's like one of those scammer accounts, but mm -hmm. she messaged me saying that I knew Larry. Like, so I knew it wasn't just like some random so, so I want to put this out to the community out there in general. My favorite thing in these situations is if they won't agree to a 30 second video chat voice and video so you can see what, you know, kind of joking, like we're not meeting in person with Tyler right. here, but at least we can, you know, get get a, a, a energy signature vibe and a kind of a face to face. Yeah. 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 So. I mean, we can go on and on, like I said, about the time with Larry. Yeah, uh, we can get into some other stuff, too. Yeah, I actually want to ask you that I, I've just heard you like casually kind of drop it during some of your interviews where you're talking about other people that you had an inner account, uh, account, excuse me, you had an encounter with inner earth beings. Um, and it sounds like it might have been brief, maybe not. But would you want to maybe go into that a little bit and just explain that experience? Um, yeah, I can briefly. But there is some other stuff I'd like to share that I haven't shared either that I want to get into. Should, so, let, okay, yeah, let, we, can, we, we can save that for later if we have time. No, yeah, no, 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 yeah, let's do your, what you wanted to get into yeah. first, Tyler. Right. I've I mean, the inner earth thing is actually incredible. And I'm going to be speaking a lot about that uh, at this conference I'm speaking at next weekend in Springfield, Missouri. But um, I've told a lot of that stuff before in other interviews. And I kind of yeah, yeah, okay. let's, let's save it for yeah, maybe we yeah, give like a link in the, yeah. in the description to like yeah. another interview. We yeah. talk about that. Well, let's hear what you wanted to bring, Tyler. Well, um, what else? So this all got real for me um, re fairly recent. A couple of years ago, um, I had another recruitment attempt from somebody else. And um, this guy claimed to be a part of the um, these, these black programs, clearing out these tunnels. A lot of people might know who I'm talking about, but... Um, it was uh, really interesting, but he he had information about me that no one could have known, and he knew things about me. He was like proved himself over and over. Like he had he somehow was involved in something that had information that I uh, I he got my attention, and we would talk all the time. And he would just enamor me with all this information, and he eventually said, "You know, what do you think about? What would you ever think about joining the pro one of these programs?" I'm like what do you mean like the secret space program he's like well something like that yeah and i was like what are you talking about i'm like and he kept saying some stuff i'm like are you, is this are you trying to recruit me right now like you know i thought he was joking he's like yeah let's just let's just pretend that i am and he's like do you mind answering a few questions and then he started asking me a series of questions and and the very last one was uh what's the one thing you want more than anything in life and i told him love and he goes, are you sure about that? That's your like final answer. I'm like, yeah, there's nothing more important. Like I want true love, you know, um, which never tell anybody the true answer to that question when they ask you, because they're going to use it against you hundred percent. And I learned the hard way. Um, and he said, don't be surprised if you're tested in that area. So, uh, the, a week later I meet this girl, we fall in love, head over heels. She lives in Australia. And, uh, after that, like I became what some people call targeted individual. I started having all of that stuff happen to me. Um, <clears throat> but the first thing that happened was I had this wild, what I thought was a dream, but it wasn't a dream. Um, I, uh, in the experience, in the dream, I was taken in the middle of the night in a black vehicle. I just remember like waking up in the vehicle and brought to these two buildings in the middle of the night. And I, Every, this was so vivid. I even drew it and I have drawings I'll share just to kind of show you guys. But I, uh, I was taken into these buildings and brought down into the basement and there's, I was tested for my abilities and, and I'll get into like the details of this a little bit, but just to kind of summarize it so people know where I'm going with this, I woke up and this was so real. It was so vivid. 
I knew the building. I, I was like, that was real. Like I, that was not what just happened. I had to draw it. I never draw my dreams. I had to draw pictures of the buildings. I just had to get it out. And it wasn't until, I don't know. Uh, um, it wasn't very long after that. Uh, I was talking to a friend and he mentioned to me something about, he had an experience or memories from the Boeing facility. And as soon as he said Boeing, I was like, that's it. I said, those were Boeing buildings. I don't know how I knew it, but I knew they were in Illinois and I knew there were Boeing buildings. So I'm on Google Earth looking up every every Boeing facility around me and I don't uh, I don't see anything. I'm like, oh yeah, Illinois. Why am I not looking in Illinois? I go to Illinois Boeing, type it in. I see the aerial view. My heart almost stopped. I knew that was the buildings. And how far away was that from your home at the time? About 45 minutes, 40 minutes yeah, from my house. Um, and uh, by the way, the guy who, like when I showed up in the black vehicle in the middle of the night with a couple other vehicles, um, the guy who was trying to recruit me was in was in the, one of the vehicles. Like he was kind of like leading that team. And uh, so anyway, I drove out there and I, I had to see for myself. And there was something very particular that I remembered about being in those buildings in the middle of the night. I remember seeing the old company I worked for, Peric Construction. I used to work for them for 15 years. I remember seeing their sign, like their sign, and there was a job site next door that they were building something. And I thought that's even weirder. Like that, why would something like that, like why would a detail like that be in there? So when I drove out there and I found those two buildings, I was blown away. I took pictures. They matched my drawings. And then I uh, I saw this truck driving with like a dumpster on the back of it. And it had my company, my old company's name on it, Peric. And I, and I looked where the truck was driving and boom, there's a job site. The sign, it says Peric. My company was building, a, my ex company was building a building next to this. I'm like, okay, that's when it got real for me. So I literally- no, 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 That's just, a, but pardon me real quick. The fact that your previous company was working there at a job site right next to Boeing that you got perhaps abducted to a few nights pre prior to that, is that a, just a coincidence, a synchronicity, or was there a tie between Boeing, who as part of the long established military industrial complex ha is involved in these pro programs, but how about Peric Construction? Yeah, I don't know. I think, I mean, they had a contract with Boeing for like 20 years or something. So, and they've been doing a lot of their buildings. And the okay. building they were, I, I called some old friends and I said, hey, what are they building out there? And so it's another Boeing facility. It was a drone uh, manufacturing facility or something where they were building drones. But Thank you. Okay. Um, either way, like I'm going to share my screen real quick just because I uh, I have the drawings and the picture of the building that I just think it's uh, really interesting. Um, it just pencil drawings. But here, let me see if I can do this. Share screen. Okay, can you see that? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so um, these were the buildings I remember, or something very similar. And we pulled up in two vehicles, and it was, everybody was wearing black. And uh, we went in between these buildings and a door around the back. So that's what I remember. And then specifically, like the door around the back, um, I remember. Um, sorry. I had, for some reason that window just went away. Okay, I remember the K seven. I don't remember. I don't know why, but can uh, you guys can still see that, right? Yeah. Very clearly, yes. Yeah. Okay, so I remember the uh, K seven, the door in the back, and and I remember those yellow baluster, those columns, very distinctly, and I also remembered um, those those um, rec those skinny rectangled windows, or I didn't know they were windows at the time. I thought it was like paint or something, but I remembered that very vividly. And, and then are um, these like barriers right here? Are these like posts? Are yeah. So like it was the memory was kind of foggy, but that was like the best to my ability. So I went out I mean, there. I mean, I mean, real. I mean, and just noting like all these posts, like they're around buildings that are like high security facilities. They don't want people ramming like vehicles into. So sorry, go ahead, right. Tyler. Yeah, so details. So anyway, I. Um, I just, I drew this the next morning. And then when I finally went out there to, um, 
look at the site. Where is that photo, photo at? Um, so the, oh, these are the buildings. Um, and it was like, okay, they're, they're exactly the, the yellow uh, mm -hmm. columns, the balusters, the rectangled windows, um, all of that. I was just like, wow, like this is it. Uh, it's a Boeing facility. Uh, but it was like in between these two buildings through this gate is is where we went. And we went around the backside to the building with the right, the red stripe on it. And and I wanted so bad to get back there to look at the door, see if there was a door back there. But there, it was all fenced off. Like the only thing on the other side of that fence was, um, see if I could find my cursor, was this uh, old military plane. Um, it's like an airport. This is a mini airport, actually. Um, which is also curious to me, Definitely. But, but, and then, you know, everything's restricted area. This was one of the roads I couldn't go down, but, um, so whenever we went around to the backside of this building and they took me, took me down, like, this is why I wonder if like a lot of the space program stuff happens on a slightly different timeline or not, like, or another dimension even, I don't know. Um, but when they took me down into this building, uh, we went down the stairs. I remember the stairs. Like if, if I could get into that building, I'd love to see if it looks like what I remember because I could tell you exactly where it took me. And it was all like very like metallic um, factory like, but we were in the basement and then we went into this room. They had like this big, this big giant door on it that seemed like a, a hangar door or something. And uh, we go into the room and like there's a big square in the middle of the floor. And there's like people all standing around the square, almost like a like it's a viewing gallery or something. It's just, and it was a very apparent that like it was a the floor was in the middle was some sort of I don't know if it's a technology, a magnetic plate or what, but it was it was separate from uh, all the individual squares on the outside. And uh, the guy who brought me down there goes in the room, and he puts on like this hazmat suit, and. Uh, there's another black woman in there. I remember she was like the commanding officer and she was in charge of whoever, like whatever experiment, like I walked into something and she's like, okay. She's like, anyone not wearing a mask has to leave the room right now. And I wasn't wearing a mask. So I started walking out of the room. I have no idea what I'm doing. And then I hear Tyler. He goes, Tyler, not you. And I'm like, okay. So I come back and they close the door and everybody puts these like, these masks on and he has this hazmat suit and he reaches down and undoes this hatch in the in the floor and raises this cylinder up this like box and it has it's inside this liquid is i drew it because um it was something like this and it was constantly morphine and like it was like almost like graphene oxide kind of and did you have a mask at this point no i they didn't still, have everyone else but you so, yeah, so I realized what they were trying to do is test my reaction to this thing, and I'll tell you what happened. So oh, it was in this liquid, and he had these big tongs, and he reaches in the box and pulls these and and pulls this thing out of the liquid. And as soon as he did, it was like an energy weapon. It was just like a blast of energy that sent everyone to their knees. It was like somebody turned the gravity on high, and, and you couldn't hardly stand up. And was it I, like liquid nit nitrogen was being kept cold and then like warmed up and then it, it was just in some sort of liquid i don't know hmm, um okay. but then whenever he took it out and it was just constantly moving and just changing forms and shapes it was almost like like a spider but not it was definitely like graphene oxide looking type of black goo whatever and it was emanating this horrible heavy dense energy that literally brought everyone in the room to their knees except for uh mike the guy who was in the hazmat suit and and myself I, it started to bring me down and i and i re recognized the energy from being attacked years and years like in my sleep at night whenever i'm under paralysis and i'm fighting these entities and whatever the hell reptilians they use the same frequency to paralyze your body and i had gotten so good at combating that i knew how to counter that frequency and i knew how to break the paralysis so it quit working on me and and then when I felt that energy, I'm, I was familiar with it and I, my body immediately knew how to combat it. So I was able to stand up and I was the only one that didn't get brought to my knees. And people were looking at me like 
I was some like they couldn't believe their eyes that I, I I was able to stand up and I had realized they had brought many people down into this room and tested them to see how they would respond to this. And then he let go of it with the tongs and it just started like floating up in, and then when it started floating, uh, I, I don't even know how I started like levitating with it. Like when he let go of it and it started going, I started like raising up with it. And I've had many experiences and memories and dreams of levitating. And I, I've already like, I knew how to handle my body during levitation because I had, I had all those experiences. So I was coming up face to face with this thing, like in the middle of this like square, like arena. I don't know. I know this sounds crazy and I'm not asking anyone to believe it, but this is what happened. And I just somehow like I thought this thing was going to kill me. Like if I didn't do something about it, this thing was just going like, to envelop me. It was like extremely terrifying. Mm -hmm. And I just like said no. And I just stuck my hand out and like just a blast of light, like white light just came out of my hand and just like pulverized this thing. And then I like fell to the ground and everybody was released from the hold they were under. And people were looking at me like I was like Neo or something. Like I felt, I, and I had no idea what was going on. And they both like looked at each other, the, the black lady and Mike, they looked at each other. And, and the next thing I remember after that was being, I just, I was in an abandoned mall. Like that was the next thing. I don't even remember what happened after that. And I was in an abandoned mall and there was one of these things on the loose. And there was a team of like a black ops team in there trying to take one of these things down. They were all in those same hazmat suits and they had weapons and they had, it seemed like they had been in there trying to eliminate this thing for a while. I don't know if this was a training exercise or what. And I just woke up in there and I saw it and I just dealt with it. Like I dealt with the one in the, in the room. And, and then that was it after that, I don't, that was where the memory ended. But then when I woke up that next morning, I had that full memory mm -hmm. and I eventually found those buildings. And I don't know guys, it's like, it wasn't even real to me until I found the buildings. And then I was like, then I had to consider like, okay, what's going on here? Like, <laughs> like what is actually happening here? I think really yeah. what it is, is like, we're programmed, like even as you, who is somebody in this community who is, you know, interviewed, all sorts of people will talk about, you know, similar experiences, like, and you believe them. What's strange about, you know, the way our brain works is like when this stuff happens to us, like ourselves, like we tend to like not believe it. And I just, I just, you know, you, you have to really question, like, how would you remember that building? Like all this stuff, like, I really do think something happened to you there. And, uh, you know, I, I just have told you before that I just feel like I recognize your energy. Like, it's not like, like unfamiliar or new to me. Like I've known you from somewhere before. Like we've met, I don't actually have any memories of you. Maybe if someday that'll come up, but I have met people in the community who say that they've seen you places and stuff like that. And, I, and frankly, I'm one to believe them. Like, and I've, uh, I think that what's going on right now is like, and I'm kind of curious as your opinion on this, like, like the new earth, the idea of creating a new earth, like I think that's 100% real. Like, and I think that oh, yeah. like what, what, what we're in charge of right now is that. And I think there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes where the old system is falling apart. And there's a lot of ET out there that are positive that are already meeting with people and right. just making agreements and just figuring out like, okay, what's your, what do you want your planet to be like? Like what kind of business, like just figuring out, okay, what is, what's new earth? What do you guys want it to be like? What do you, and then people making agreements like, okay, yeah, you can come on board with the galactic federation as new earth. We like you. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. Shake hands or whatever it is they do in their culture. But like, I think that something like that is actually happening behind the scenes. But, and, but more on a, not necessarily on a conscious level, this could literally be happening while people are going to sleep. Yeah. I think right. there's a lot of stuff that we're not supposed to remember. And I think that if, 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 if there's anything that I've learned from these programs, it's how much we underestimate how faulty memory can be. Like, mm -hmm. like memory is like a thing that can be tampered with messed with. It can be faulty. And, um, but, but at, at the same time, let's look at your, your specific memory here, Tyler, you know, it, it all adds up and it's perfectly consistent with these patterns that have emerged. Okay. You, you, multiple attempts to recruit you by people claiming to be and with 
insider knowledge of these programs. They tested you for an ability, and then what do you know? Okay, this guy passes their little test. And, and, and then one of now the things you're... I want to say right now, and I haven't ever yeah. really said this before, is like people like I always say like like I know people that like say like like think like how cool it must be to like have these abilities and be in these programs because like I know I have abilities that are really intense and really crazy and like it'd be hard for like for some people to wrap their mind around and believe. But like what people don't understand is like it's actually terrifying because the military like kidnaps you when you're a child and like they need those abilities and they take them from you and they use them as like a weapon. And that's what's happening to people is I think that like a lot of us really are like powerful beings that are star seeds that came here to help. And the military through, you know, looking glass technology and everything else and seeing through timelines, they know exactly who we are. Right. They target you. They target you from birth. They know exactly uh, what planet, I mean, what planet, well, maybe what planet you're from, but what family you're going to, the parents, they know who the parents are. I mean, they have a readout on the entire, they have a file on Something the entire. Something that I haven't talked about publicly yet, actually, is the fact that, and I don't want to take over your interview, so I'm just going to briefly say it, but they can they can decide what family you're going to put be put in, because a lot of us were actually, like, born in these programs. Like, they got, someone got pregnant in one of these, like, black ops pro programs, and then, like, they need to put your fetus somewhere, so they put it into like a project surrogate type mother. And then um, through time travel, it's all really fast. Like they're able to get you back at six years old and then put you right. back and then grab you again when you're old enough to like learn how to fight in combat. So like, yeah, it's, it's, uh, they're well, able to actually put people in the families, which is really creepy because I've gotten memories of like different timelines where I'm not in the same family, but I don't yeah. want to take over your interview. That's something that I'll talk about later when other people interview me. But well, um, well, something interesting about that to that note is this is something I don't share because I don't have a memory of this, but why not? Let's entertain it. Uh, I did talk with Peter, the insider, and um, it was pretty wild. He claims to like he looked up Larry and all the stuff, like basically verified everything I was talking about. But the one thing he did when he pulled my file uh, was. He was like, oh, like he goes, you weren't born in 1986. He goes, you were born in 1966, 20 years earlier in Venice, Florida. And he said you were under this name, but it had the same initials. And he goes, you were immediately a missing child and you were taken into the programs. And at the end of your 20 years, instead of going back into that body, they put you into your your mother's room. Like I went and, and, I, and I was born. So he said my actual incarnation on this planet, like on this in this life began in 1966, not 1986. And he goes, this would explain why you feel older. Your body hurts. So he goes, you're, you're, you're a old, old soul, all this stuff. You feel like you've been here before. And you know, when he told me that it really hit me emotionally and I have no way of proving this. I don't have any memory of this, but it did something to me emotionally. And I had to, I have, I have some advice for you, Tyler. Yeah. Don't gaslight yourself. Like you, you always talk about like, trust your gut feeling, use your own discernment. And like, you know, right. like when you find out when these files get unsealed I, from what I remember, I actually remember like timelines where like, where we actually see like our files and stuff like that. And I just remember the feeling of like, why did I ever doubt my intuition so much? Like I knew all this stuff already. You know what I mean? Like right. I always doubted well, it's, myself. It's, it's just, it's it makes sense because it's hard to believe. And like, it's easy to sit there and interview people and, and listen to these stories and believe what they're saying. But then when it comes out of your mouth and it happens to you, you really like, oh, okay, like, am I crazy here? You know, it puts you in somebody else's shoes. But um, there is one thing recently that happened um, that I'd like to share. And um, you see me under your Facebook post talking about, uh, are you guys froze? Oh no, you're there. Um, you see me in your Facebook post talking about Neil McDonough, the actor. Um, and I was like, you know, I, I had encountered him and, uh, you know, you were talking about celebrities and the programs and stuff. So I was in Colorado with a friend recently and, and the last day of the trip, I wanted to go up to the Cheyenne Air Force, the Cheyenne Mountain. I wanted to see, mm -hmm. I wanted to drive up to the gate, see if I could take a picture and just see what happens, you know? And on the way, my friend was like, um, there's the Air Force Academy over there. And I looked over and I'm like, I'm like, I just had this flashback. Like I knew the place. And and I was like, how do you get there? And she's like, the exit's right here. And I like darted across four lanes and got off the highway. And, and uh, 
she was like, whoa. I'm like, I was like, I got to go. She, I was like, can you, ch-? she's like, yeah, you can actually tour. You can actually tour the grounds there. It's like the main Air Force ca- Academy. And I was like, let's go. She was like, she thought it was weird. I was just like all of a sudden on a mission and like completely change of plans. We were going to Cheyenne Mountain. So I get off the highway and, and we're driving up to the gate and there's a line of cars going, going through the security guard station. And I'll show you a picture of that. Let me share the screen again. Um, and, and for the audience, Cheyenne Mountain apparently is where uh, there's a real stargate in the basement. Yeah, Project it's, Looking Glass, I think, happened there. Yeah, yeah. App- apparently there's a lot that goes on there. All right, look, 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 look. Um, oh, yeah. So anyway, this is the guard station. We had to wait in line. And then we were sitting in line, and they were just like the you know armed personnel, and they were – uh, just checking the ID and then the car would go. But I was looking at those lines. I was like, I know those colors. Those colors are to indicate that this is an underground base. And those are the stripes on the floor in the underground facility. And each one is a different security clearance. You've seen it in the movies. You've heard whistleblowers yeah. talking about it. But this is, a, this is them telling you without telling you that this is also an underground facility. And um, like top probably potentially where who knows what's going on. Definitely ET program related stuff. But uh, I was explaining to her that these colors indicate the stripes and that's how you know, whatever. And she's like, how do you know that? I was like, I don't know. And we get up to the guard and um, she would, they, she looks at our IDs and she like, and then she's like, okay, um, looks at us. She goes, um, can you pop the trunk, please? And she literally searched our whole vehicle. Like the only car in the whole line would search the whole vehicle. Did they check both your IDs or just hers? Yeah, both. Um, hmm. And um, so whatever and she let us go it was fine but this thought was curious that we were the only ones like you know of course so we get we get onto the site i'm having all these emotional feelings i'm like i'm like i remember this place i'm like i've never been here in my life before like i remember this place and she's like what do you mean i'm like i don't know i said it doesn't i don't know how to describe it but it feels like i'm home like it feels like i'm back home and she's like what, what do you mean? I was like, I hate to say that this, this, a place like this, a military base would feel like home, but I feel like home and I'm driving and I'm like, yeah, I remember these buildings. And then we got around the corner and I seen the view of the mountains, which is um, like here. And I pulled the car over and I broke down in tears. Like I had all these memories just come back in, a, in, in an instant. And she's like, what is going on? And she's like, are you okay? I'm like, I literally was sobbing, like all this stuff was coming to the surface. I had a full body reaction. And it's like, I remember this place. I've been here. And and I was like, there's how I'm like that building. I said, that, and then we're driving up and I'm like that building over there. Those are dorms. That's, and those are dorms. And that's uh, that's like the recruitment center where they take the new recruits. And I said, I remember standing in there and I'm telling her all this stuff. And she's looking at me like I'm crazy. And we uh where's the next photo so where is and do you one? suppose this happened from when you were first incarnated 1966 was it don't know that's a good question so i never thought about that so this is i took this photo when we parked in the building to the left i said that's the building i was taken into i remember it vividly i said i was taken into that building and i was standing in in a circle of people and one of those people was Neil McDonough, the actor, which is, if you guys don't know who that is, I got a picture of him here. Um, he plays the same, he plays the same role in every movie. Like, <laughs> and he, there's no way he's not involved. Right. There's even a new movie coming out with him called The Benefactor, where he's in charge of other timelines. It, like, it's completely, I, I saw that that movie was coming out. I'm like, get no fucking way, you know? Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, them putting Cheyenne Mountain in Stargate in this right. series, it's so. They, they, so this is him in another movie. He's always some sort of Air Force, military, mm-hmm. captain, admiral, something. You know what I mean? And he has all the eagles in these movies. And I think that the, the people that star or play in these movies, uh, they also, like, they're playing roles that they serve in the programs as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but I pull up and I, I'm explaining to her. I'm like, yeah, I was in in this building and it was a circle of people and they were talking to me. They were trying to recruit me. And they're like, they're like, yeah, don't like, don't think of this as a recruitment, but blah, blah, blah. We'd love to have you, you know, you're the perfect fit. And they're trying to sell it to me. And I remember Neil McDonald. I just remember him being in a part of that circle. And 
we broke free and like i was like i remember just standing there like thinking to myself how did i get here like i didn't have any memory of how i got onto the base like i couldn't i was i remember standing in the circle like i couldn't even, wasn't even really listening to them i just kept thinking to myself how did i get here how did i get here like this and i just couldn't figure it out and i knew something was off and like i didn't want to be there i didn't want, i'm like i didn't sign up for this and then I'm like, and then I'm like, they got me. I'm like, then I was like, they got me. Damn it. Like somehow they got me. And I'm standing there and he's, uh, you know, and then everybody breaks off and he walks me down the hall and they bring me into this room to watch this introductory film. And he's standing there next to me and I'm watching this movie. And it's like, welcome to the Air Force Academy, blah, blah, blah. And it's like all just some, like a commercial or something you'd see on TV. And all of a sudden it like cuts to a cuts to a video of them torturing children and cages and like all the stuff. And it's like horrible. And I looked at him like, what the fuck? I remember I was like, what the fuck? I was like, dude, what are you show? What is this? this and he man. goes, relax. It's just, he goes, relax. It's all part of the job. And mm. I was like, I was like, dude, turn uh, that off. I was like, turn uh, that uh, off. Like, I don't want to see that. I got super pissed at him. Yeah. And, and he just kind of like smiled at me and he smirked at me and he's like, uh, welcome to the, welcome to the base or so I forgot he said, welcome to something. Uh, it's, it's foggy. You know how the memories are, but, and then he goes, do you want to go, do you want to see your room first? Are you hungry? Do you want to go to the cafeteria? And I was just remember being a day. I was like, I guess, um, I'll eat something. I'm, I was starving. I thought about it and I was starving and they brought our, they escorted me into the cafeteria and I remember there, you know, everybody was eating. There was like a buffet of food. And immediately I noticed something that was off. Like there was female uh, Air Force recruits also like females, but they were all like beautiful, like way too beautiful. And immediately, like all of them were looking at me like they were all ready. To, they did, like they all just wanted to have sex with me. Like they were eye fucking me. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and I was like, this is off. Like I was like, this isn't how reality works. And. I go get my food and the one girl walks up to me and she's immediately like throwing herself at me. And, and I'm like, this is, these are honeypot girls. I'm like, these girls are here to keep these guys at bay, like to keep them like, th just like Larry was talking about, they, they, st they sell the programs with women. So they, if for think, all we know, those ladies are beta kitten programmed and they're right. not even under their own volition. They're, they're being dangled yeah, in front of you. Most likely, yeah. Right. And, I, I got so sick to my stomach at that point. I didn't even eat my food. And I was like, can you show me where my room is? And they brought me up to another building and to, and which I knew, which isn't on in this photo. And they took me up to the room. And I remember looking out the window thinking, I'm thinking to myself, how am I going to escape? I got to escape. Like, I remember just thinking over and over, like, how can I get out of here? I have to escape. And then, um, I, for some reason, I also know that there's like a jump room or a portal under this facility. I just remember that. Uh, and I think I did end up escaping. And I think it was through that, um, through that portal or that part's memory. But I remember being chased and running down through like the basement of this facility. And I remember some sort of weird like jump room thing. But uh, what's also curious about this is this place is see that pointed thing. It's all under construction. Now it's actually boxed off. They built an entire building around it. It's a chapel. They claim that it's a chapel, right? But it's not, it's a technology. Uh, this is a technology to, for the programs to communicate. Well, they're, what they're trying to do is recreate, um, uh, technology that they discovered on this location, which is why they chose this. And they're trying to harness that technology, but they don't realize that the technology is coming from the mountains and they're never going to be able to recreate it because they don't understand the significance of the mountains. But anyway, they built this and they shut it down. And then now they built an entire building around this right now. And it's under construction until like 2028. Now, what kind of can I'm in construction? Like what kind of can rehab takes freaking five years, you know? And what they're doing is they're upgrading the technology, in my opinion. Uh, but this, this, the, the entire Air Force Academy is connected to the Cheyenne complex and the Stargates. And there's an entire massive hub here for the programs, in my opinion. But uh, I definitely remember Neil uh, being there. And I don't know why, like you see the actor, I'm like, why would I, why would an actor be in my memory? But I had a full, like I, 
it took me so long to recover from that day. We walked around that base. Um, I was being followed by two different people. And I mean, maybe I'm, I was being paranoid, but I wasn't because my friend almost came into the men's bathroom because this guy followed me in there and he was I staring me down the whole time. It was super weird. And she was like, something is off. Like, I was like, I, I kept wanting to go. And she's like, well, maybe it's good if you walk around and like just process this. And, and then uh, this other guy was fought, like followed us into this other building and he literally like bumped into me, like bumped into my shoulder. And he like, as we're walking in, he like blew past us and almost knocked me over and like flew through the door. And we looked at each other and he like looked like a fed boy, had the glasses on or whatever. And I remember he like flew through the door and he checked his watch and he was like, just took off so fast. He went around the corner. I didn't see where he went. We walked around in the building and we left. We were leaving. As soon as we were walking out the doors, he just came out of nowhere and he hit us again, like, bumped into us again and walked out and as soon as he walked out he checked his watch again and pressed pressed a button and i was like we have to get out of here i i was like panicking i was having a panic attack i'm like i i, I can't be here like this was stirring up so many memories and emotions and i just couldn't believe that i had been here before it was so real to me i was like i know this place and I, every, time I would, every time i yeah which building were you in? Were you in this building depicted when this guy is body checking you or are you in a different No, building? no. So we were in the, they, they have like a tour, they have like a gift shop area. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Got this it. building is a chapel. This building was shut off, but this is inside the chapel and it has like this massive organ piece of equipment, which, you know, frequency and sound, like obviously we understand that's a technology. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's another picture of the inside of it. I don't know if I, got it in here or not but it's just like you look at the picture and like okay this is okay something so, 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 so the guy body checks you a second time he checks his touches his watch again you're like i gotta get out of here to, to your girlfriend and and then what happened well he uh he just beeline to his car he never looked back and he got in and took off and then we just uh, we went back to the car at that point and and uh, got out but uh, and left and i just remember like I, I just felt it took me a long time. It changed my life at that point. Like, and I even took like the pamphlet for the place. I took one home, like just like to sit there, sit there and like meditate with it to see if I can get more memories back. But it's scary. Like something in me, like there's a fight or flight. And every time I try and sit with it to like dive into that more, I can't like, I don't know. I'm trying, like, maybe I'm not, maybe I shouldn't do that, but, uh, and she was what she told me. She goes, you know, if you just told me this story, I would I would find it interesting. But she goes, me witnessing you break down like that and pulling the car over. She's like, you can't fake that. She goes like uh, she goes like. I don't even know what to say. Like, I don't like she had a hard time believing in all the programs and stuff at the time. But uh, she's like, if she didn't see that, like, that's what sold it for her. And I'm like. I don't know what happened. Like I just broke down, you know. Well, then she also got to see this a Fed boy hassling you on campus. Like yeah, that's she, like Larry, you know, where we've got the black cards going by. It, it that definitely takes it up a notch. Oh yeah. So here's the best part. I didn't even say. So after I got done explaining to her that I was standing in the circle and like being recruited and all that stuff, and they took me to watch that movie, I told her all that before we went into that building. We walked into the building that I've never set foot in, in in this body. And the first time I ever on a site, and guess what we see? There's a kid in there in a circle of people with like an, an Air Force officer, a recruiter, and his family. And he's standing there, and the guy literally says, he goes, no, I don't want you to think of this as a recruitment. And she turned around and looked at me with like her jaw was on the floor. Like exactly what I described happened to me in that building we walked into that scenario and there is no way that I could have known that that ha that t t those type of recruitment introductory things happened in that building. Unless I, th I, there's no way I could have known that there's just no way. And we walked into it and that to me, that was all I needed to see to know that it was real. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh that's real. Yeah. You, you were there and that's all. We're, we're at the point now on our, like, like on our channel and I'm pretty much on your, like all, we're all at the point where we don't have to sit here and question, is this real? Right. Like we know. Yeah, we know. And same thing with the people watching this. Like they know too, like they wouldn't be tuned in if they didn't.
And then Tyler, in, in terms of your, your experiences there, your testimony, do you suspect that maybe they had you there for a while? You remember not only the recruitment, but between the time when you were having got to escape, however you escaped, do you feel that, that they had you run missions, quote unquote, and that might be part of the visceral reaction or they only had you for the day and, and you got the heck out of there promptly? I don't know. Uh, I, I know that a lot more, I think a lot more happened there than I, I remember. We usually only remember the first day. Like a lot of the times, like the, even, and even that's blurry, but you usually only remember the first day if you get memories back. Yeah. Like I mean, that would, common. that would be the first day for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like Daryl James talks about that too. Like uh, with his, his right, story. He does. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. And then there's all kinds of other things you just notice. And w- once you realize like this is all a world within a world and most of these buildings are actually like doubling as something else at our front for a, uh, some sort yeah. of recruitment, recruitment center or something like, like there's an appliance really warehouse. Common yeah, it's like there's so an, common. Yeah. There's an appliance warehouse down the street from me called appliance discounters. And it has the, uh, it actually has the a like here, I'll show you. Um, share. I just shared the screen again. Um, so like it has the A for, yeah. for the like aerospace industry. And right. what's weird is like, it's right next, it's right by like all these recruitment centers and, and like this restaurant that I always eat at, that's right next to this place. Like one day I walked in there, like after I figured out that this, I was like that I, when I left the restaurant one day, I saw the logo and I'm like, that's weird. Like, and then I went into the appliance shop and looked around and I felt like a, well, like a direct energy weapon was being used on me. Maybe I was crazy. But anyway, the second time I went back to that restaurant, uh, I'm thinking to myself, you know, it's like some sort of recruitment center or something. And I walk into the restaurant and there's four female Navy recruiters sitting at the table eating as soon as I walk in the door. Literally, like the honeypot male, female recruiters, like I remembered at the base. Like, and I'm just like, I was so tempted to go talk to them, but I was like, no, don't even engage because who knows, you know. Uh, and there's just stuff like that. And then so that day, whenever I left the uh when I left that restaurant, literally pulling out of the parking lot. This truck was blocking the exit. Pegasus transportation. Holy shit, dude. This truck was wow. I, I took this picture from the parking lot of that building. Wow. And I was like, there's no way. So fast forward to February. Crazy. Fast forward to February of this year. I went on a trip to New Mexico. We booked an Airbnb that was technically, we didn't even know. Well, we did find out, but it was called the Gray Escape, which I found interesting. Like, who names an Airbnb the Gray Escape? And then we were down the street from uh, a recruitment center that recruited for all for all four branches of the military. Navy, Air Force. Before. Yeah. Navy, Air Force, Army, and Marines. All but, here's, but here's what here's what caught my attention. So I had to go back and take these pictures from Google Earth because I didn't take them there. I wasn't thinking about it. Um, here's what caught my attention. So this building is literally like the recruitment center is connected to that Smoothie King. Look at the look at the sign, Pegasus Retail. And uh, so, yeah, Project Pegasus. Yeah, Pegasus Retail, right next to the uh so there's there's the sign, and here on to the right is the recruitment center. I'm like, okay. recruitment center, Pegasus. I just had that Pegasus encounter in St. Louis that you guys just saw. Like, um, I don't know, just weird things like that. You start to like, you start to really look at things differently. Like these buildings aren't like they're being doubled. They double as something else. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it, yeah, like, and even like you're talking about with the. Uh, um... The Boeing thing uh, near where you live, I had a similar situation, but it was with a company called Gulfstream, and they, they, they were trying to get me to work there. Like, I was just trying to upgrade. I was being, uh, doing janitor work at the time, and the job I had was freaking me out because there was SSP stuff going on at the school, and I was, like, working with the kids is like un, like in the underground facility. Like, there was an elevator that went down, and I was, like, trying to find a new job where there wasn't sketchy stuff going on. And so I right. go to this Gulfstream, and the guy's like, oh, yeah, 
So you're going to have to sign all this paperwork. And he's like, it's going to take you two or three weeks to get your security clearance. And I'm like, I'm just a janitor. Like, obviously I didn't take that job, but like, I knew like, I'm like, they're probably like building spaceships under underneath the ground or something like that. Mm -hmm. And it probably would have been one of those jobs. Like, like where Preston Nichols talks about it with Montauk, where like during the day he worked two different jobs. Like right. I yeah, think yeah. it would have been like that kind of scenario. And I think that kind of stuff happens like more often time. than people realize. Like, yeah. All and, the time. and I think that like these programs, like like people like us, we I think we're more likely to get memories back because of our abilities and because you know we have psychic abilities and things like that. But I really do think like they need janitors, they need cooks, Everybody. they need yeah, and I just feel like like more people are involved in this than 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 people like like than like even we as SSP whistleblowers like amount to. Like I just think it's like way more far reaching than people realize because it's it's free labor. It's like that meme, like it's free real estate, you know? It's the same thing. Like it's free right. labor, unlimited right. free labor. Unfortunately, like evil groups are gonna take advantage of that if that's the thing. And that's the reason why this disclosure movement is so important, is because once people understand the concept. And even once we learn like fail safes where you can like stop or make it so you realize it, like, I don't know, like that's really the number one thing for me is I want this to stop. I want this like massive amnesia that we have, this hypnosis, like our, our program, our, our channel has like literally the description is just anti-mind control. That's it. That's the whole description. Right. Like that's what I, I want the end of this. And I want people to just, I, I don't know. I just want, I goes without saying I'm, I'm just let's preaching to the choir right now, but it's like, I really just want this to end. And I, I'm tired of having like me personally, I'm tired of having entire lifetime stolen from me on a fairly regular basis. Like it's psychologically a lot, like it's damaging, like, and uh, it's, it, yeah, it's just, there's so much evidence. Like you just laid it all out. And uh, that was beautiful. Tyler I really appreciate, like, can't thank you enough for coming on the show and just being like, wait, I know you want to talk about the, the, the inner earth, but you, trust me, you got to <laughs> see this stuff. Like, <laughs> well, I'm really I glad you did that. Cause it was amazing. I mean, not many people like are bringing like. Are, I mean, a lot of people do have photos. I shouldn't say not many, but I think it's important whenever you have stuff to show and to go along with it, whether it's evidence or not. Like, it's still, in my opinion, it it's, it helps for the listener. It's turning in your brain for sure. Right. And I, and I wanted to add, you know, in our community, we have remote viewers now. Um, in addition to you know people who are able to. You know, through yeah, he's worked with Jessica Jones before. Yeah, you know, yeah. You know, the cryptid hunters and through telepathic contact reach higher yeah. beings and get information. A question I have for you, Tyler, is have you done any um QHHT or other types of techniques or consulted anybody who have any oh, yeah. of these abilities? And and then have you get gotten any insight? Oh yeah, like if I told you all the, I've had six different QHHT sessions from six different people. I've seen channelers. I've, you know, uh, talked to Peter, the insider. I've had other sessions where stuff comes through. Uh, if I started talking about all that stuff, like it's incredible what I'm involved in and when I was taken, how I was taken, where I was taken. I don't have memories of any of that stuff. So I don't talk about it. Right. Um, but if it's, but if it, I mean, the stuff from the sessions that came out of my own, or the hypnosis that came out of my own mouth. And I still don't even like, I still don't talk about that stuff. Like I had one whole life on the Mars that I remembered or that came through a session in one of my, uh, in one of my uh, hypnosis. And uh, it was really well, interesting. I, I sense that you just don't want to ever like say something that's untrue. And I respect that. And, but at the same time, like I, you know, I guess you can always just like put that grain of salt out there that like, Hey, this is crazy for even me. Like, you know what I mean? Like, right. Yeah, I know. Um, it, it just, like I said, like I, I'll, if some of it, I'm just not actually comfortable talking about. It's not that oh, I don't want to. I, I just, it's, it's such wild information that, like, if I were to listen to myself, like, if I were to record an interview and then listen to myself back, like, if I know it's not coming from like my heart and my like my true memory, like, I just don't feel like I should be sharing it yet. And that's all. Like, I'll tell anybody sitting around a fire we can talk about it all night long but i'm not going to go public on a public forum and share that just yet maybe at some point i'll share all of it but until i know that it's even accurate until i can somehow yeah. verify that it's even accurate then i don't think it's necessary because what good is all that information going to do everybody anyway like we know it exists so i don't well, know and, well tyler you know it's speaking to um in, in our closing moments here 
what good w- what does w- one of the things I, I we like to put out the call to everyone you know for yourself and then for posterity and for the public record write out your chronology timeline you know um yeah what year you were born when you were first taken what things you saw and and it might look like the wolverine chronology if we have 20 right. backs or time looping or reincarnating right. and then write up a summary of your timeline and then off of that, we ask your, your demands. And a lot of people, we have very similar demands. We want full disclosure. We want justice. A lot of people, you may have worked lifetimes or however many years that yeah, you don't and, remember. And, and I want to close, it, owed for I, I wanna close right. the interview also on like, like so like um, two things, New Earth and then like the disclosure movement. Like, But like one thing like I want to ask you, Tyler, is like, like um, wh- what, what do you think that it is going to take for us to take this secret space program, time travel, like all the stuff, take this like out of the conference circuit and get to the point where like we've got the Air Force and Navy and stuff like that in court. And we're actually like dismantling these programs and then building like the new Earth military. Um, like, do you, do you think like like we're at the beginning steps to that? Like, uh, um, I think we're there. Curious. I think we're at the very, very beginning steps, like the prerequisites for that. Like, I don't think we're quite there. Um, I know we're not quite there yet. Um, Well, time doesn't exist, so we are there, and it's going to happen. But it's like physically, it's kind of playing out a little slower than we thought. There's all this weird shit happening right now. If we anyone listened to our recent episode with Daryl James, we kind of covered and answered that question. But um, I think we're going to get there. But I think my part of my mission right now is um, we all know what happened with Corey Good recently and the whole mm-hmm. deposition that came out. And when that came out, thousands upon thousands of people automatically wrote off all the secret space program as bullshit. Like he was the godfather of it for some reason. At least that's the way some people viewed it. And it was actually detrimental to the topic, to the subject, because yeah. – now everyone's like, oh, he he, is, he said he was lying about this, whatever. Like there's a whole, that, that's an entirely different discussion. But it really, uh, I, I think we took a few steps back with that. And I think that was always the plan. And yeah. so I feel a responsibility and obligation to keep this stuff alive. But I realized like, we're not going to keep it alive by telling all these fantastical stories from space. We need to, we need to reach the skeptics. So that's why we're working on a documentary right now. And I actually just got back from California with Tony Rodriguez. We went to Inyo Kern. We went to the place where he had his memories. Talk about we had talk about a crazy story and being followed and all that stuff. Like that was interesting. But we got some incredible footage. So what we're doing is we're we're filming a documentary right now. I don't know the the, the when it's going to be re- released. It's going to be a while probably because I want to do it right. Mm-hmm. But we're going to focus on the Earth base aspect of the programs the recruitment process the places we can go to boots on the ground have photographs of we can corroborate stuff that would and show people that forget what's going on in space like this is the beginning stages of this program and this is what's happening right here on this planet and these buildings are real that this person remember this is real we can prove this here's something you know we we're going to go in and try to connect the dots and make it tangible so even when a a skeptic watches this documentary they're going to be like hmm you know they i want to make it so they can't they have to at least question it i don't want them i don't want to start off and like that's great i don't want to start off with somebody like yeah i was on jupiter and we were doing you know we lived on a ranch on the rings of saturn and all like no one i don't care who you are like if you're trying to make people take this stuff seriously that stuff's not going to make them take it seriously. You got to start on earth. You got to build the foundation for the, 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 that these programs do exist. Mm-hmm. Then you can start exploring the stuff off planet that we have no proof for. But until then, let's focus on the stuff that we can prove. And that's what the whole purpose of this documentary is. And I know it's a massive undertaking, but I want to do it right. Hopefully we can put it on Amazon Prime and you know, get it out there released. I'm talking to other people. It's it's a big ambitious project, but I'm doing it. So, well, you guys did an amazing job with the Cokia Mountains documentary, by the way. Like, yeah, I that documentary literally brought me to tears at multiple points because it was so well Thank done. You. And um, yeah, it just blew my mind because, like, like obviously the ley lines was such a huge part of the 
the message and like healing the ley lines. And we had a brief conversation when he asked me about Montauk. He said, yeah, that's probably, you know, scary going back there. Like maybe that wasn't good, but I told you about how we healed the ley line there. Mm -hmm. And like, I didn't even know, like you're over here learning all this stuff about ley lines. Like, so it just shows me like, we are like, that's the reason why it made me tear up. It wasn't like sadness. It was like right. joy. It's like, we're remembering this ancient, like knowledge that was mm -hmm. stolen from us deliberately and that's like so beautiful like right. it's it's so incredible mm -hmm. and that's what I, I think is like, like a positive note for us to leave on here is like there's a lot of traumatic stories when it comes to these programs like obviously like you know getting kidnapped when you're a child and stuff like that like isn't fun it, uh isn't like a, a it's a horror story not like a fun story but we, there's a lot of really beautiful transformation happening right now a lot of healing and, um, you know, sometimes when you heal, it's a little irritating at first, but, um, I, I think that's a, just like, we're at, like you said, the preface, the very beginning, we may not be able to see the fruits of our labor. You know, other people might have to sit in the trees that we plant, you know, in the future, mm -hmm. but, um, we're starting something here and it's important yeah. and we have to keep going. The rubber is meeting the road. Absolutely. Yeah. Well said. And thank you for the kind words on the documentary uh, a few people said it made them cry i was like wow like i had no idea you know we were just putting this together it took us years to put it together because of you know covid and all that stuff but uh it was successful and i'm excited to do another one it's a lot of work but yeah um, you, you guys definitely yeah. know how to make documentaries and i hope that like you said it gets to the point where you can get it like on like amazon prime and these streaming services where people will just be farting around looking to watch something and then they, they find your documentary. Like, right. And then they find journey to truth and right. Be yeah. Out. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, and then, you know, you know, it started off as a podcast. Now we're doing conferences, webinars, documentaries, you know, it's like so much bigger than just the original idea. Like, Hey, let's just, you know, record some conversations and throw it online. See if people listen and it's it's blossomed into something beautiful and i don't know where i'm going to be in the next couple of years but i do i do see it you know getting bigger and bigger and not that that was ever the goal but i really am proud of what we created and i think um i think i'm just grateful i should say i'm just grateful that i'm even blessed to be in this position where i can do this work and help everyone help help people you know well, you're at the head of a movement, and uh, and thank you for the work. You know, God bless. Yeah, everybody definitely appreciates what you guys do, and um, thank you. yeah, opened up a lot of. It helps a lot of people. Um, it really does. So, but yeah, thanks for coming on the show. I think we can wrap things up right now. Um, obviously, Tyler's show is during the truth. Like, check it out. Like, watch the recent interview with Daryl. Sounds like it's relevant to the conversation. Um, and, um, we'll add links in the show notes, everybody. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, just thanks so much for coming on our show. I know you're a busy guy. You got a lot of stuff on your plate. So yeah, we just really appreciate you taking the time to uh, speak with us. And yeah, uh, thanks. Thanks for having me. I'm, I was happy to do this and I'm glad, you know, we tried planning this a few times and I'm glad it waited till now because I, I think um, it happened at the same, at like the perfect time. Cause it's the first show with, with Brian and I think we're really going to be able to elevate things and take things up to a notch. Cause I'm sure, you know, like when you have two heads, like you can kind of talk about like, Oh, is this a good idea? Should we do this? Like, right. Yeah. It helps have things. Someone. Yeah. yeah. And so, and with the questions too, he's going to ask questions. I think he asked a lot of good questions. Today. Yeah, absolutely. It's been a great interview and, and uh, yeah, I just, I look forward to the future and Hey, I'll see you at journey to truth conference next year. I'm going to be yeah. celebrating my birthday with you guys. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah, so yeah, we'll, we'll, I'll see you then. Right. Awesome. Thank you, Tyler. Take see care. God bless. Um, yeah, and then